welcome back to my channel currently reading in this video I'm going to share my book review of Roald Dahl's The Witches and I'm sitting in front of my children's books that I had when I was growing up um, I've gotten rid of plenty of them and these are the only ones that I decided to keep um, most of these are my favorites and the classics you know probably one of my favorites is actually uh, the giving tree right here um, I also really enjoyed Bridge, Bridge to Terabithia. Um, but so back to this one, I recently heard about this one. Obviously, I know Roald Dahl, um, Matilda, and the BFG big time books. Matilda being like one of my favorite movie adaptations. Um, but I recently heard of this title, and I wish I could remember where I read it at. Um, but I came across that and I was like, hmm, that sounds really interesting for like a children's book author to write about witches. So that kind of intrigued me. And I was like, I'm going to try to look for this. I didn't want to get it on paperback swap and use a credit for a book that I felt that was going to be readily available for me to find. And so I searched for it at my local friends of the library, didn't find it. And then one day I was at a thrift store and I found several of his other books and I was like, oh, maybe, maybe they'll have like the whole collection. And I kept finding them like three books of his at a time and each one didn't have the witches. And so I kept looking, kept looking. And then at the end of it, I ended up finding like almost his whole collection and found this one and ended up buying them all, as you can see all of the James of the Giant Peach and Charlie and the Chocolate Factory. And they're all the nice um, same designs and the colors. And I was like, I, f I don't want to just take one of them. I want to kind of keep the whole set just because, you know, they're beautiful colors and they look brand new. And whoever donated them to the thrift store donated all of them together. And so I just, I felt bad if I didn't keep them together. So I was like, I don't need all these children's books, but I decided to just go for it and get them all. <laughs> so back to this. I don't usually read children's books now, but it's a nice change of pace, right? Um, and s specifically just because he is such a well-known author, I was like, you know, what's it gonna hurt to just read a kid's book? So, and especially since I had been wanting to find it and I found it I just felt like I should read it it would only take a day or so so I started it and I definitely had to kind of turn off my um, inner critique when I read this as an adult and really just kind of remind myself like this is targeted to kids <laughs> and stop like critiquing it <laughs> as I would like maybe an adult book and not that I critique books that I'm reading, it's just, you know, it's hard to read a kid's book as an adult because it's, the language is just, you know, more for kids. And so I, man, I can't describe that very well. Anyway, I um, immediately kind of found it a little problematic, actually, just the way that he was uh, describing women and only women can be witches. And I was like, um, men are wizards. <laughs> How do you not know that? <laughs> um, and so the way that he was describing the witches, I mean, obviously this is all make-believe, but, um, I just found it a little problematic how he was describing them, um, very much painting them as, like, these evil, um, people. <laughs> so that was, uh, an issue for me, but once I got past that, I was like, okay, Sarah, it's for kids, like, just deal with it, like, this was written, like, back in the 80s, like, I think 83, before I was born, so just, just go with it, and once I did, you know, I found that it was really easy to read, I, and I read it in a day, and, um, it was fun, and it was exciting, and, um, I don't know, spoiler, but the young boy in the story ends up, um, being turned into a mouse by a witch, by the witches. 
And what I thought was really interesting, you know, I think in any norm other's story, it would probably be the boy trying to become a boy again. <laughs> the the boy mouse boy trying to become a boy again and but he like really accepted being a mouse which I thought was like really interesting um his philosophy was and I guess it's such a kid thing right is oh I don't have to do homework anymore I don't have to do all these little things I'm just a mouse now and you know I have a basic simple life I don't have to worry about rules and all this stuff um so I thought that was really interesting which also reminds me, like, he, I found it interesting for a children's book that he, Raw Dahl, like, doesn't um, skirt around, like, big issues. Like, he, his parents were, died in a accident and um, became, like, an orphan and had to live with his, I mean, had to live, was living with his grandma. Um, so I thought that was really interesting that he, like, introduced such a tragic and such a, a trauma in this kid's life. Um, I just feel like if I was a kid reading that, you know, that would be super shocking to like think about my own parents dying. And, and you know, maybe it's, it's good for some kids to read that who have experienced such trauma at a young age. So I just thought that was really interesting that he did that. Um, which rem like, I couldn't remember any of his other stories in such deep in that, detail to know if he introduced like like really dark subjects um you know I can't really remember I mean I guess Matilda has you know a little darkness and Charlie and Chocolate Factory I don't know and I don't know you know too much about Doll's history or anything to know if he wrote like that for a reason but I just thought that was interesting and interesting that the the boy was fine being a mouse um and you know luckily he still had his grandmother to take care of him I also thought it was interesting like um and I guess it's because Dahl um his parents were Norwegian and so he really introduced a lot of like culture aspects that I thought was cool for like a kid's book um, a, in a cool way for kids to kind of pick up little tidbits of Norwegian culture or English culture, um, which I don't really remember having kids books that like taught me things like that. So I thought that was really cool that he did that. But um, let's see, anything else about it? I mean, I, I did think a part of it was kind of, I was like waiting for, for things to happen. I'm like, okay, come on, let's get going. But um Overall, you know, it was a it was a cute book and, you know, kind of made me want to read all of the ones that I got, but I was like, uh, I don't want to exactly spend all my time doing that. But I like the idea of returning to a children's book, like, after I read a really heavy book um, about, like, some serious social issues, right? To kind of lift the mood a bit and just kind of do what books, a lot of people turn to books for, for an escapement. Um, rather than what I tend to be doing is more for like education um, and educating myself. So it's a nice change of pace. So um, if you never heard of The Witches by Roald Dahl, like I hadn't before um, a month ago, um, you know, that's an option. And I mean, he's got such a collection of, of stories, as it says, the world's number one storyteller. <laughs> Um, so I, I recommend checking it out. I mean, he's a classic in children's literature, so I'm glad I got, found this. That was super exciting to be able to find that and then to find his whole, not his whole collection, but a lot of, of his books at the thrift store. So I ended up getting all of them, which was, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, twelve books. Um, I think we pay just like... 75 cents a piece. So it's pretty good. So until next time, keep reading.